We are going to have public comments. So those of you who are joining us, we're, we'd love to hear from you as well during public comment portion of the meeting to reflect on your um, thoughts to, to be able to at least commemorate his life. And before we have the moment of silence, I just want to let the members speak because I know it's on their hearts and mind. So Mr. O'Leary. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> uh, so please bear with me here. Um, so uh, my friend and colleague, Bob Basiri has, uh, has passed away. Uh, it is a loss to his family, his extended family, his professional colleagues and this community that he called home and served so well. Uh, my relationship with Bob only goes back 47 years. Uh, as a young and newly elected official at the ripe old age of 19 and Bob as a young 30 something, already well respected serving on the finance committee, I was, the, I was his appointing authority, uh, two very different people. Uh, the man I met then was the man I collaborated and served with uh, over all these years. As I embarked on my political career, Bob was embarking on his volunteerism in public service as a public, public servant. As I had political ambition, he didn't have a political bone in his body. Uh, way back then, as I was loud and boisterous and attention seeking, he was tolerant, respectful, level-headed, analytical, soft-spoken, soft and wicked smart. Wicked smart guy. This guy was just wired differently. He appreciated the engineering and fast cars, sailing the Caribbean and off the Cape Ann, and he was even a scuba diver. As I got to know more of Bob, my respect and appreciation only grew. I saw him serve on the Finance Committee, School Committee, Hillview Commission, and the Board of Selectmen, not to mention all the various study committees and subcommittees, such as the old High School Rebuilding Committee, the JT Berry Reuse Committee, Community Impact Team, Water and Wastewater Subcommittees, and one of the first sewer study committees way back in 1972. He did all this while traveling the world for work, engaging in his kids' activities, uh, being a loving husband, devoted son, doting and proud father and grandfather. I had the privilege, honor, and truly the benefit of serving and collaborating directly with Bob for 27 of those 47 years, 12 while serving on the Hillview Commission and 15 on the Board of Selectmen. Bob Vasseri was a true professional, respected, decent, kind, empathetic. He was the best of listeners. He heard every word. He couldn't help himself. He had to listen. He had to analyze. And he had to offer solutions. As I said before, this guy was just wired differently. Bob took pride in all that he did and those that he associated with. He always smiled with pride when things got, got accomplished. But the biggest smiles, and the only times I heard him boast, was not anything to do with the town, but to do with his family. He loved to talk about his kids and their accomplishments, his grandchildren, all that they were undertaking, and his childhood sweetheart, Angela, and what they had accomplished together. In the next planned trip to Seattle, or the next vacation, where his family would all be getting together. The previous mentioned traits um, made Bob unmatched in leadership qualities. He was focused, he was able to keep us focused. He had a strong moral compass, which kept us headed in the right direction and back on track when we strayed or derailed at times. For Bob, there were only two requirements for meeting and addressing the challenges and responsibilities and those, and those which would do the right things the right way. Bob never sought recognition or credit, but never shied away from responsibility. He earned the respect from all that served with him. He cheered every board, every commission and committee he served on. Annually, I would nominate Bob to be chairman and somewhat jokingly refer to him as chairman for life. In all honesty, we were all better off with Bob as, as chair. Bob's contributions are unmatched. We are a far better community because of Bob's tireless efforts and contributions. And to Angela, his children and grandchildren, we share in your loss and appreciate your sharing Bob with us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. that was beautifully said. 
um, Mr. Walner. Um, I only became, uh, I only uh, learned to become aware of Bob over the last 10 years. <laughs> and he, you know, everything Steve said is true. I've always been amazed at his, his ability to be rational. He pursued issues, but he never owned them to the point where it got him upset personally. He focused on the facts. He listened to people. He gave many, many opportunities. I watched him do meetings and he, you know, he always, but he also knew when to cut it off and get moving on. So I just, I thought he was a really balanced individual. So I, I don't want to drag it out. Steve did a great job. I'll just say there's someone like Bob Missouri. You're never going to see somebody like him again in our town. The same way we'll never see Tom Brady again in our town. I mean, just the, the level of his dedication to service is just beyond what any of us will ever probably ever see again. So, you know, I have, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the memorial service because it feels like we haven't gotten to that level yet. And so when that happens, you know, it should be a really good upwarding, but just a wonderful person gave me time when we were transitioning. You know, I think I took over a seat officially and he uh, reminded me of that. And, um, you know, I, I was honored to, I'll never fill his shoes. And I'll, I, I, if I get 10% of what he did, I'll consider it a huge success. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walner. Mr. Schultz. When I first heard of Bob's passing, it saddened me because we're in this, you know, we're on a Zoom meeting right now. Or we're in a COVID-19 environment. If Bob had a wake, there would be lines to Middleton of people in there to pay his, their respect. If we had a meeting tonight at town hall, there'd be people overflowing at public comment in the hallway. Um, Bob's a legend of North Reading. I mean, he has served every capacity known to man in our town and He's just, I, had, I only had the opportunity to serve with him for two years, but I just found him to be selfless. He's kind. His institutional knowledge is second to none. Um, and, and Bob didn't have an agenda. Bob just always did what he thought was best for North Reading. He was just a very kind man. And, um, and I just think, I, I'm just really saddened by his passing. And I wish, you know, nothing but the deepest condolences to Angela and his family. I just, I'm really saddened by he deserves more right now that we can't because of COVID-19 get together and, and honor him and respect him the way he deserves it. And I just hope there will be a time that we can do that because um, man, he deserves it. The man spent over 40 years serving this town. You think of how many dinners he's missed with his family and events that he missed for his children because he was, he was serving the town in one capacity or another and just mad respect. I mean, it, He's a legend and he deserves better. And I know we just can't honor him the way we would because of COVID-19 and uh, just Bob, may you rest in peace and Angela and, and Bob's family. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Mrs. Gonzalez, you're on mute. Um, Andy touched on how I was feeling also. I, I, I knew Bob outside of, uh, on another committee that I'm on that he belonged to. And so I, I knew him from there um, and got to know Angela and just, just beautiful people. And I feel the same way that it's just such a shame that we can't honor him the way that we would have. Um, and I hope that that day will come soon that we'll be able to do that because he was absolutely outstanding and what, like rich said when when we took these seats i mean he got on the phone with me he you know anytime you want to ask me anything talk to me any advice i mean he was right there and and willing to help however he could he was just just a great man thank you mrs gonzalez i appreciate that I appreciate my colleagues giving their remarks. It is a strange time for us and it, it, it is a, a tremendous loss. And just to echo what my colleagues have said, this was a man who was honorable, he was decent, he was altruistic in his motives, he was intent on his focus. We all have benefited, the entire town has benefited from all of his efforts and in his service. And I, at my, I had one of my greatest privileges so far, in addition to serving with him, was being able to host the, um, the evening that we had for him when we, we thanked him for his service. And I, I just want to take this opportunity to do that again and invite people who are 
who may be listening to please, you can participate during public comment to give us your reflections on him. I don't think we can do that enough. And I do look forward to memorial service and remembering him and commemorating him and commemorating everything he's done. But for this moment in time, I just ask everyone to please, to take a moment of silence um, to commemorate his passing. May he rest in peace and thank you everyone for your comments. And we are to the next um, order of business, which is board member reports. If anyone has anything that they, they have, um, am I skipping anything? We are at board member reports. Okay. So we're at board member reports. Mr. O'Leary, you're on mute. Uh, again, there'll be an update later on. I, I imagine um, from the town administrator in relation to the um, water, wastewater, and how we're progressing with that, which is terrific as far as the chlorination plant and all the rest of the temporary uh, chlorination plant. And I think we're meeting again shortly, I forget what day, um, to help that get that uh, finalized and moving forward. So we're looking for the board to take some action this evening on, on one of the matters, which is uh, of importance. And, that's great. Uh, the only other thing is that uh, if we want under uh, board reports, but um, I would just like the board to go on record at some sort to um, to support uh, mail-in balloting, you know, as soon as possible. And I, I know the uh, Secretary of State is uh, proposing some legislation and has proposed legislation uh, from other members of uh, the House and the Senate. But I think it's important that um, we send a message to our legislative delegation that it's important to ensure that everybody has an opportunity uh, to participate you know in the electoral process as soon as possible and as easily as possible and you know whatever the that solution is going to be um, that we go on record at least um, supporting an alternative mechanism to make it easier for people to vote and because this isn't going to go away this whole virus thing isn't going to go away and people are going to be nervous and uh, will want to participate and they should have it uh, available to them by mailing it in rather than just the absentee voting process but uh, something a little bit easier so uh, mr o'leary are you in favor of us sending a letter as a board with us signing off on a letter yeah signing off on a letter in support of um, you know some sort of um, alternative expanded voting mechanism other than just in person or absentee Okay, so let me just do this while you brought that topic up and see if we have the unanimous consent of the membership to do so. Um, Mr. Walner, are you in agreement with that? I'll agree. You, you consent with that, Mr. Schultz? Uh, for town consent? elections, I would agree, not for national elections. I think I, I, Mr. I, I, Mr. O'Leary is only referring to the town, the upcoming no, town election. No, 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 no. I'm no. I'm referring. I'm, re I'm referring to to all elections this year going forward, not just the town election. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, I, I'm a, no, no. I'm talking about. Uh, I'm talking about the the primary if possible in September and in the November election. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Schultz, you're not in agreement with that total in total. Yeah, for town elections, I would agree. All right, yep. Mrs. Gonzalez. Same. I, I I agree with town elections, but I I would not be supporting um, national. Okay. Just uh, why would we not want to support on a national level for national elections, which is the ones where the most participation takes place? Why wouldn't we want to provide people with ample opportunity to participate as easily as possible without uh, getting? All right, I, no, I mean, I, to, let me let me let me not let us get into a debate because it isn't an agenda item. I just thought if we could have the unanimous consent, that might be something that we could move forward on. We don't have that, however. Let's for, let's note that for the dog. Let's let's look at the special legislation. I think it it's in it's in under consideration. It may go through several variations before it happens. I would request um, but, to put on our next agenda then as an agenda yes. item. Let's do that so that we can really just 
iron out those issues and then debate it then. Um, okay. So we can have it on a gender item matter chair next week. Yes. Meeting. Excellent. Thank you. Yes. Mr. O'Leary, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was doing that thinking we might have the unanimous consent of the membership. But as we all know, we don't decide these things ahead of time. So it was a great point to bring up. We'll put it on the agenda. And there, is there anything else you wanted to add? I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Walner. I just, uh, thanks to the 40 something people in town who came to my house and we all sang, uh, not last Sunday, but the Sunday before on our sing-along at six o'clock on a Sunday. And it was our last time doing it. It was a great turnout and you might've saw it on Facebook, but it was just great spirit and you can't beat the town spirit in North Reading. Yeah, Thank you. Perfect. All right, uh, Mr. Schultz. Uh, you have uh, two things, one sad, one happy. Today, I, I, I'm, I heard from our church that Joe Sadlow passed away today. A lot of you folks in town know Joe. He was in his 90s. He was a World War II vet who served in the USS Fremont. Um, I believe when he got out of the service, he was stricken with polio. He was confined to a, a scooter, but still in his 80s, made it to his World War II reunions every single year. Just a real salt of the earth. Great guy. Um, his daughter, Christina McCormick, um, Joe Dover on Park Street, just a great guy. And he passed away due to the COVID virus and just was announced today. So my prayers are with him and his family. On a happier note, um, on Saturday, former board member Sean Delaney uh, basically raffled off the shaving of his head for the North Reading Food Pantry. And he ended up shaving his head on Facebook Live at 6 o'clock on Saturday night. And the town st stepped up and raised approximately $2,400 to the food pantry for Sean shaving his head. So, And he looks good. I think he's, I can see he's watching us right now. Um, he looks good. He looks a little bit like Prisco, but, um, he's right there, but it was a great event. And he raised again, the people really stepped up and they really, the food pantry, it's tough because donations are down because of the COVID virus, but Sean single-handedly raised $2,400 and it was awesome. I just want to thank him for his efforts. Okay. Mrs. Gonzalez, are you willing to shave your head for the cause? I'm only, yeah. I'm only. <laughs> I'll just donate the money. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Um, I just wanted to, um, we, we have done a little shout out for Lynn Kelly and the, the birthday parades, which continue mm -hmm. to go on, um, bringing a little happiness to the kids in town who are having quarantine birthdays. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure that Descolis has gotten any props and I just wanted to throw out there that that Descoli's um, does send a small cheese pizza um, with no charge to all these kids um, for their birthdays. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, and really just from my heart, I, I wanna say that there's so many people who really are struggling with this. Um, if they have depression or they're alone, um, a lot of older people who who live alone and they're not able to have anybody visit them and there's people really struggling it's been quite a while now and i just want to say that um there's a light at the end of the tunnel we're getting there we're closer and just hang in there and i'd like to just say everybody just be kind be kind to each other um we're in it together. Let's hang in there. We're almost there and we'll be back, hopefully, to some kind of a normal soon. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Gonzalez. And I just want to, I want to continue to thank our finance people, our, our town employees, our, our town administrator, our finance director, our, all of the people that are working around the clock still keeping government operations going. We have a financial planning team meeting that's meeting now on a weekly basis instead of a monthly basis. Capital improvements planning team has been meeting more often with uh, Don Kelleher at the helm. So we thank everybody for continuing these. Finance committee has been meeting at, with Abby Hurl, but everybody that's been having this laser-like focus on getting us through this working out the issues with the budget because we know it's going to be a financial hit but to thank these people these the all of these people have other commitments and 
A lot of them have children at home that are not in school right now that are younger and requiring uh, their focus as well. And that's a lot to be juggling. So we thank you for all of your continued efforts and appreciate the volunteers who are stepping up to try to carry us through this period of time. And again, to just say how sorry we are for the, such a tremendous loss of uh, Mr. Mossieri and what a grateful community that we are to have had him because of everything he's done for us. And to thank Mrs. Mossieri, Angela Mossieri, her kids, and our grandkids, because we know that level of service doesn't happen without the support of your family at home. And um, we wanna thank you for supporting him so that he could do all these things for the town that we're so grateful for. And so with that said, we're gonna move on to the next order of business, which is public comment. So do we have anybody that would like to join us for public comment? I don't see any hands, Mr. Gilberto, do you? No? I do not. Okay. All right, folks. So we are to our next order of business, which is um, the minutes. April 15th, 2020, regular and executive session minutes. Madam Chair, I move to approve the April 15, 2020 regular session minutes as written. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further comment? Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manupelli votes aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve the April 15, 2020 executive session minutes as written. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I vote aye. And uh, now next order of business is a COVID-19 update by Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a couple of things that I will note. The first is that with the extension of the stay at home advisory and the non-essential business closure, the town hall, Flint Memorial Library and Edith O'Leary Senior Center um, remain closed to the public. Um, they can be reached by telephone or by going on to their respective websites. Um, and you, if it, you know, you don't know the specific website, just start with www.northreadingma.gov. Uh, we continue to monitor the situation here um, in North Reading. And I think between our last meeting and now, um, one of the areas where we've seen an, an uptick in activity has been at the, uh, the nursing home here in town. And so we continue to work with the Department of Public Health with regard to um, that situation. Um, I also wanted to note for, of course, anybody who's not aware that while we initiated a, um, a face covering requirement when going into establishments here in North Reading, I think almost three weeks ago now, um, that will be something that'll be required statewide, um, including in indoor public spaces, I believe effective this Wednesday. Um, as is happening at the state level, we are looking towards the possibility of uh, loosening of restrictions at some point in the future, whether it be May 18th or some point after that. And we continue to focus primarily on how we might be able to uh, return the workforce to the buildings, um, to be able to open the buildings up, if not for um, um, walk-in service, at least for some amount of um, in-person service beyond what we're doing right now, which is really kind of the minimum. Um, but uh, I just want to commend the employees, particularly those in the town hall who continue to come in at, and deliver services. Um, those in the senior center who are working both remotely and at the senior center as required and then with the library as well. You know, the folks continue, um, whether they're visible on social media or otherwise, or in the background supporting those efforts, um, you know, our workforce continues to, um, to contribute and to try to respond to the public's need to the best extent possible given the circumstances. The, uh, the final thing that I'll just add is that this afternoon I had the opportunity to speak with 
the veterans agent and uh, Richard Stratton, who was the commander of the Minute Militia. And um, I think that we're all in agreement that the uh, ability right now to have the traditional Memorial Day parade and gathering uh, on the uh, on the common on the morning of Memorial Day um, would appear to be um, certainly very limited at this point. And so I know he's consulting with the members of the Minute Militia, and we've had some initial ideas about some uh, alternative ways for the community to recognize Memorial Day and observe Memorial Day here in North Reading. And I expect that there will be more information about that forthcoming in the next week or so. Uh, but I, I do want to thank Susan and, and, and Rich Strat Richard Stratton for their efforts really over the past few days to sort of look at what might be the best practice and, you know, factor that in. And, um, you know, we, we look forward to being able to um, propose, you know, what will be um, different ways, but ways nonetheless for us to observe Memorial Day here in town. Um, and uh, more to come on that. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Does it, do the members have any questions of Mr. Gilberto? Mr. O'Leary? Good. Mr. Walner? <laughs> Schultz? No. Mrs. Gonzalez? No. I just have one. At the Board of Health meeting the other day, which primarily discussed the issues with the nursing home, there were um, attendants who said they hadn't spoken to their uh, family members for 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 at least a week, I think one woman said. And I'm wondering, I know there was going to be some follow up by the public safety director and then our public health nurse on making sure they were able to speak speak to their family members there. Do you have any sense of what happened with that? Was there an I, update I on that? I do, yes. Uh, so there was follow up that next morning with um, the nursing home and with the Department of Public Health um, because those parties are together on a conference call every day um, about the nursing home. And um, I did speak with uh, the resident who spoke up during the conversation and I am informed that there was a fairly swift response to um, provide updates and, uh, and get the family in touch with the, uh, the patients. So it, it would appear that there was a very favorable response very quickly thereafter. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Mr. Goldberg. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, just a quick question to the town administrator in relation to uh, uh, protective equipment for our public safety and employees. How are we set for inventory and protocol and all the rest? So we spoke this morning on our weekly COVID-19 meeting and uh, I have been assured that the uh, public safety departments do have um, sufficient personal protective equipment um, for, uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, there is an effort underway on our part to try to focus on um, beginning to um, add to our supply of the non um, N95 type masks that may be available for use by, um, by folks who are going into public buildings at some point in the future, for example. So, um, you know, we feel that we're in good shape and I think we're all aware of that, you know, significant delivery that we got from the, um, from MEMA, uh, got a month ago now, I think at this point, but we've also had a lot of donations for fabric um, coverings that have been made, you know, and we're in the process of maybe taking those where they don't fit the bill because of the medical exposure and allocating them to, um, to other spots where we may need them in the future. But we appear to be in good shape is a short answer. Great. Okay, well set. All right, so we're moving on to the next order of business, which is to approve the F, I mean, before we get there, review the updated FY 2021 revenue and plan. Mr. Did I lose you? Did nope, you Matt, lose here, me? here. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. So the finance director is here this evening. Um, Liz, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we do have a copy of the plan that was in your packet and uh, we're just going to review the highlights here this evening and give the board an update as to where we stand. Um, so for the board's edification, two weeks ago, the financial planning committee met and we came to the you know approach that we were going to you know really dig in and try to research, look at the trends from the past, and look at the forecast, and try to come up with a revenue plan from which uh, municipal and school operations could work from. 
And um, we, we got to that point on Thursday and to the point where we want to you know, present it here. Um, you know, there are variables in it and Liz will re re respond to that, but um, this is sort of the document that we're going to be working to reconcile with at this point in time. Liz? Yes. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm going to share my screen now to show the revenue plan that the board has in their meeting packet, and this will be um, a quick review as only a few changes have been made since the last time we reviewed this. One moment, please. Can everybody see my screen? Mm -hmm. And it says 4-30-2020 in the right-hand corner? Yep. OK. So um, everybody is, is familiar with the revenue plan. And as we discussed at the last meeting, uh, we continue to evaluate new growth values um, as well as the new growth value for 104 Lowell Road Martins Landing. So those continue to be highlighted and we continue to monitor those as we um, move forward with uh, the FY21 budget process. Moving down to local aid or cherry sheet items, uh, you can see that we have uh, chosen to reduce chapter 70 to the FY20 uh, budget um, amount. And the reason for this is we did some research back into 2008, 2009, and 10 um, when there were uh, nine C cuts at the state level and reductions in revenue. And um, there was not a large change uh, year over year from chapter 90, um, and it was not a decrease. So we felt comfortable with leaving that level at FY20 uh, dollar amount. Unrestricted general government aid, we have reduced uh, by 5%, which is about 94,000 over um, FY20's uh, budgeted number. And those were the only changes uh, that we made since the last revenue plan update. There had been uh, some other changes that we had made that we level funded um, charter school reimbursement and public libraries receipts offset. Those had been level funded to the FY20 uh, dollar amount. Moving down to local receipts. Uh, we also did some research going back to um, 2008, 9, and 10 for motor vehicle excise and what the trends were and just see you know, what, what we should do and how we should be conservative with this number. So we brought down um, the number for motor vehicle excise by $50,000 at the last meeting. And um, we've reduced that number even further by $75,000. Um, as we know, you know, car sales uh, right now are, you know, very limited um, with dealerships being closed and, you know, online sales and different ways of doing it, but the sales are down. So that will reduce the amount of motor vehicle excise that we will receive in FY21. It doesn't um, so much impact us for FY20 uh, as it takes some time for the registry to pick up the vehicle and for us to for, uh, send out the bill. So there is a little lag between the time you purchase a vehicle and the time that um, someone receives a bill for motor vehicle excise. The other area that we reduced um, and we had reduced from the last meeting, uh, we went from 425 to 400 to 375 was uh, license and permits. Right now we have uh, achieved our FY20 budgeted revenue um, projection. However, you know, we don't know where the economy will go and what, you know, re remodels will be done or, you know, additions will be done and we need to be conservative in this area. Uh, the other area that we reduced further from the last time we reviewed the revenue plan is meals tax. Uh, so we had that budgeted at 225, then we went down to 200, and then we went down to 175. And this is just based upon, um, you know, restaurants 
being, we don't know when they're going to fully be open. Um, and yes, there's takeout available, but it's still, they're still being impacted. And so the first quarter of the fiscal year could, you know, have a potential impact to our, our revenues. There have been no changes to other financing sources. We continue to evaluate and see if there's any uh, additional funds that we can, um, you know, add to the other financing sources categories. Moving on to the expense page, um, there have been no changes to the fixed cost expenses up here. Um, the changes that have been made are down below, which get distributed to the school and municipal side. And the changes have to do with um, school health insurance and municipal health insurance. And these numbers we uh, carry at a seven and a half percent increase, which is what we have been carrying them at. And we were carrying on the municipal side, um, 105,000 for new FTEs and the school, um, the school was carrying, I believe about 75,000 for um, uh, new FTEs, which is new employees uh, that were part of their uh, modified level services budget and the municipal's departmental budget uh, requests. So we have eliminated those new FTEs as there's no way for us to um, create new positions. And so we are able to reduce that uh, health insurance figure for that. Moving on down to the budget distribution. Um, at the last meeting, we reviewed that there was uh, 58,509,000 available right here, amount available. Um, and now there's 58,290,000 available. So we went from 58,509 to 58,290. And that's, that's to be split between the school and municipal side. This is the breakdown of the total municipal allocation. And you can see that the municipal health insurance number was reduced by 105,000 from um, 1,768 as it was on April 9th or on or about April 9th. <clears throat> um, we come down to what the municipal's uh, deficit is currently. And this is to the municipal departmental budget requests. This is not to the town administrator's <clears throat> uh, budget requests nor to the select boards or the finance committees. This is what departments have uh, submitted and to for what the revenue is available. So we currently have on the municipal side a 1.1 um, <clears throat> million dollar deficit uh, budget gap, if you will, uh, that we need to somehow uh, make cuts to and uh, you know come up with a balanced budget. And going down to the schools allocation, uh, the schools uh, shortfall budget gap. Uh, deficit to their modified level services budget is 811,000. Um, and on the town side, we went from one, close to 1.2 at the at prior. Um, and now we're, it was 1.194. And now we're at 1.161. And the school was 738. And now they're 811. Um, there is one piece to the departmental budget requests um, for the municipal side that um, got, has gone through the capital process and has been um, distinguished as an operating budget expense for stormwater compliance. So on the municipal side, we need to add $50,000 to the departmental budget requests. So that increases our uh, shortfall, our budget gap, our, our deficit. So um, I want everybody to just be aware of that. Any questions? Okay, Mr. O'Leary, any questions? Uh, no questions because uh, Madam Chair, you and I have been sitting through this, but we'll be sitting through it for the next few weeks with uh, Liz and town administrator and the school department, uh, the finance committee for the next few weeks. So. No, I don't have any questions. Just uh, again, I appreciate the effort that's being put in here to, first of all, identify and keep the board well informed as to you know where we are uh, currently based upon the uh, budget request, 
and where we need to get to. And again, this too is uh, still up in the air and heavily reliant upon what the state aid is going to be. So we've been taking a rather conservative approach, hopefully a fiscally conservative approach that uh, won't get us in trouble, won't come back to bite us. But uh, again, this, I mean, the state budget isn't going to be settled July at the earliest, you know, probably August or September, depending upon the way they're going here. So a lot is relying upon the federal government reimbursing the state governments. And that might be something else that we want to uh, weigh in with our uh, congressional delegation to ensure that whatever the next stimulus package uh, uh, comes into play, that uh, state and local governments be included in those stimulus packages because uh, state and local government are the frontline people to deliver services to the public and um, we're gonna need some help. So I think we should weigh in on that too. Thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Walner, any questions, comments? Just a comment is it's, it looks, you know, I've never gone through the budget process before doing this type of thing. It looks like big gaps. I know you and uh, uh, Steve O'Leary are, you know, very well experienced in doing this. So is this an unusually large gap or is this normal? Is this about what you would expect at this point in the process? I would say for this year, it's, it's, a little bit more unusual in terms of the gap, but that's because to be acting conservatively given the likelihood of the significant cuts every city and town is gonna to experience to local receipts, we have to act this way to yep. sort of buffer that. So I think it's a little bit larger than normal. However, just to keep in mind that as Liz explained, this is based on the every request that was put before us. You know, we, we gave a broad, uh, we didn't say level fund, we, we gave everyone broad, and the school department does the same thing, although theirs is a little bit more of a needs-based, but we, we are too needs-based, but we said if in a perfect world, what would you need for your operation? So yeah. we, we won't yeah. be able to afford that. Yeah this year. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, just uh, do an observation. No, that's that. No, this is the time to talk about it. So and it isn't going to be easy points. for us. Yeah, the, um, biggest Mr. Schultz. Oh. Yeah, the biggest difference this year is the uncertainty of the revenue stream, uh, state and federal government. So I mean, and then when you have the impact of, you know, state aid when it comes with the lotteries and when it comes to meals tax and excise taxes, things that you could uh, pretty easily forecast, you know, pretty pretty easy to do um, reliably uh, that everything's just everything's skewed you know so it's uh, yeah. the, the biggest challenge this year is really on the revenue side um, and being able to, to give it our best guess and best shot knowing that as we set our budget for the new fiscal year uh, the state hasn't finished their job yet so uh, and, and again that's that's maybe part of what we want to talk about too madam chair is, you know, our goal is still to have a town meeting and have our budget in place July 1st. I think that's important. So. Right. So I just want to give the other members an opportunity to talk, but also to, you know, the other the other thing, Mr. Walner is, and to the other members, is that this was really a, a structured analysis that was given to this by the finance director and the town administrator going back and be really the, the closest thing, if at all, where the was that period of time in 08, 07, 08, 09, where they analyzed that to determine, you know, what percentage or what level of cuts did the town receive back then? It's a different scale, it was a different scope entirely, but at least some indicator for them to be able to factor in what we should be factoring in conservatively in the event that we, you know, we know we're going to experience a, a drop in receipts. I don't think there's a question of that. It's just what percentage. So I yeah, appreciate they're part. looking at this, yeah. given in a structured analysis is a way that they did. That, um, sounds, Mr. Like, that sounds like a good strategy. That was a good, yes. that sounds like a smart strategy. Definitely. And um, any other questions, Mr. Walner? No, thank you very much. Mr. Schultz? Uh, to Madam Finance Director, I, I give you credit. You're trying to come up with numbers now. It's almost like, you know, you we're asking you to make lemonade, but not giving you any lemons here. I mean, it's really hard for you to project these these revenue streams when it's just so much uncertainty out there. And I think next year's budget is going to be even 
more difficult than this year's when it comes to we see the full extent of state aid and you know and that, that type of thing. My question to uh, both Ms. Rourke and Mr. Gilberto, I know we have rainy day funds, and I think if there ever was a time to use a rainy day fund, it's raining pretty hard out right now on this budget. Uh, is there anything available we could use to help um, try to patch cobble this year together from a rainy day fund standpoint? We do have a, uh, um, a general stabilization fund that we have worked hard to put um, transfer money into over the years, including I think a half a million dollars a year and a half or so ago that we put aside. Um, I think that we're you know concerned about going um, to that because I think we're not quite sure of the duration that we need to rely on it. But uh, it does certainly remain, you know, to be something. Or it, it continues to be something that's available to us, um, you know, like moving forward if need be. Thank you, so, Madam Chair. That also, uh, is that Mr. Schultz? Yes. Okay, yes, Madam Chair. Just, just to Andy's question and point. I mean, at the financial planning team meeting, we've been discussing, you know, what do we do and what's the duration. And I know Liz has participated in some conference calls with the state officials as to what you can anticipate. But there's uh, no doubt in anybody's mind right now that you know this coming year is gonna be a challenge, but it appears as though the following fiscal year, the end of the next fiscal year and the following fiscal year could even be posing even greater challenge. So before we go and start tapping our rainy day funds or our stabilization funds right now to try and close this gap, we should uh, you know take a more cautious approach and conservative approach and try and live within our means at this particular point, knowing that you know, we're in a fortunate position here in our threading where we at least have two town meetings, a June and a, an October town meeting to adjust the budgets accordingly. So um, I think the, the general consensus to this point, I think has been to, uh, to not necessarily look to the stabilization funds yet because we think the worst is yet to come. And, and maybe Liz can elaborate a little bit more as far as some of her conversations and what she didn't get out of the, what kind of information she didn't get. Let, let me just turn a uh, hand to you to ask um, Liz some Liz questions about this um, as we're reviewing these figures. So, I mean, we can definitely opine as to where this and that should come from. But remember, this is really, the, you know, what they're reviewing this constantly and they really haven't gone back here to kind of um, go through department requests to TA recommendation yet. We're not even at that step yet. So let, let's give Mrs. Gonzalez an opportunity to ask questions if she's got them. Go ahead, Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, not really questions. I, I was gonna ask about uh, rainy day fund also, but absolutely agree with Mr. O'Leary that only if we absolutely have to, um, because I agree that I think it's gonna just get harder. Um, and I just have such confidence in this financial team um, and we'll just do what we, the best we can do. Okay, Mrs. I know Mrs. Hurl, but you have your hand up and I know it, it's probably related to the use of rainy day funds. Can I just, I just want to ask Liz a couple of questions on this. Because as you went through this, Liz, um, okay, Liz, can you hear me? Now I can, it was all broken up before. Yeah. I'm going to keep the video off. I'm still here, but I'm going to keep the video off because that seems to be disrupting my ability to communicate with you. Um, so when we when you go through this plan, I think you said you backed out FTEs from the municipal side. Did I hear you correctly? Yes, that's and correct. And you backed out the fig and you backed out the figures on um, health insurance from that only health insurance, not on the actual positions. That's the next step that the town administrator and I have been uh, working on. Uh, we have come up with, you know, the list of all the requested new positions and um, some other items and come up with a total and we still have a, a budget shortfall. And I just wanna remind everybody that typically by this point, 
we have our budget hearing um, and we have a balanced budget. So it's very unnerving for myself and the town administrator that we are at this point and do not have a balanced budget. So just getting back to those questions. So you you backed out the the requested full-time employees. No. So we Not yet. we have only um, backed out of of this figure the health insurance for the FTEs. We did that during the last financial planning team meeting, like on, off the cuff. Um, and the same with the school, their number is just the backed out number of new FTEs. It doesn't um, include the salary figure for those. So, okay. um, you know, that we would go through that exercise of what the uh, salary figure would be. And the town administrator and myself have um, have done that. Um, and, you know, it's close. In other words, your bottom line deficit here doesn't include the backing out of the salaries yet. Correct. Right. So that's, then, they, they total about 500000 So. All right. So that's going to reduce it. Exactly. To a, even though it's a nerve wracking amount, it'll reduce it somewhat significantly. But my second question is, you did you reduce, we have vacancy, vacant positions that haven't been filled yet. And so doesn't the school. And are, are you, do you have a calculation of those and then pulling that out of the, the salary and pulling that out of the health insurance for municipal and school? So we have done that for the newly created FY20 um, vacant positions. So the ones that have not been filled yet that were created for FY20. Um, we have not done that for vacant positions that are longstanding vacant positions, you know, that may have just been vacated or, you know, um, where it, we, we were in the process of hiring for those positions. So we, we, for example, the town administrator's grant writer, project manager position that is still vacant and was funded with FY20's budget, um, that figure was backed out. So at this point, a vacant position like that, um, we have backed that out because it was counted as one of the new FTEs as well. Um, as it was, as it's not filled. And the health insurance number is based on where we stand, you know, um, on a three month average. And so that's that's why that's um, added back in for FY20 because it's yet to be filled. Um, but the other vacant positions there, there's one in GPW that just needed oh. it mid April. Um, that hasn't been backed out because that's a DPW, uh, position it's not a newly created position and it's been vacant it just became vacant um so the town administrator and i discussed today looking at vacant positions that have been long standing um you know and do we have a freeze on them and what, what we do with that so that plays a role into it as well um there's other areas that are requests by departments that are ads um and they're not just level funds so we are examining those as well um you know, and even after all of that examination, uh, we still have um, a pretty substantial, you know, shortfall. So we, you know, are going to have to even drill down even further um, into the level funded uh, budgets. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can we, um, Mrs. Pearl, but I know you, <laughs> I can see you had your hand up. Next. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment about the rainy day fund uh, because that's being talked about not just on the Board of Selectmen, but in various other places as well. The stabilization fund should not be spent on reoccurring expenses for all the obvious reasons. You know, for example, if next year's worse than this year and you use the stabilization fund to underwrite, I don't know, salaries, fire trucks, whatever you want. Well, fire trucks not reoccurring. What do you do next year? Okay, you're in an even worse position. The idea of the stabilization fund was certainly for a major emergency. And there's no question that COVID is a major emergency. But as I see it, uh, it's a one-time major emergency expenditure. For example, if by some fluke we had to create a COVID rehab center someplace, 
That would be a one-time re- uh, expense. It would not be reoccurring and we wouldn't have to fund next year. So the point of the stabilization fund is, is for basically one-time major emergencies, not for reoccurring expenses. Um, in addition, there's approximately $3 million in the stabilization fund. Um, and the finance committee has been in the process of trying to um, upgrade the uh, amount that we would like to see held uh, because that the 5% of net revenue has been the amount for the stabilization fund for a number of years. And, you know, a gallon of paint costs a whole lot more now, so to speak. Uh, it really is not a suitable amount. Uh, but if you look at the deficits now and you look at what's in the stabilization fund, if you were to try and, for example, cover those deficits, you would, you would spend almost 70% of what we have for emergency use. So uh, hopefully um, the conversation about the rainy day fund will go away for the time being because it just is very scary because I don't think for one instant we're gonna be in a better position for the next several years. Sorry. Okay. Nope, that, that's fine. Thank you for your input. I appreciate it. I was going to comment on that, but I just wanted to give everybody the chance to ask Ms. Rourke their questions. Ms. Rourke, I saw your hand up there. Did you have your hand up? Yes. Um, okay. Madam Chair, I just wanted to mention that, you know, the town administrator, myself, um, you know, yourself and Mr. O'Leary and the rest of the financial planning team, we continue to um, go back to the drawing board and, you know, look for ways to balance both the municipal and school budgets. So I don't want to be alarming. Um, you know, we, we will be able to meet this gap one way or another. Um, and, you know, we have extended town meeting to the end of June. Um, in order to allow for, you know, give time for social distancing and, you know, allow for the public to participate. And so we, you know, I guess appreciate the extra time that we have this year in order to be able to um, drill down even further into this budget. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rook. Does, are there any other questions? M Michael, I can't, Mr. Gilberto, I can't see any hands raised. Anyone else have hands raised? All set? Okay, now that we've reviewed that glum forecast and realize all the work ahead of us, we'll just move on to the next order of business, which is the approval of the FY 2021 employee health insurance. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, thank you. And uh, the finance director is obviously here as is the human resources director, but you know, I think at this point in time, you know, we've we've put a lot of effort into looking at the renewal for fiscal year 2021, talking with the financial planning team, talking with the board members, talking with our insurance advisory committee, talking with our um, partner in um, the managing the participating um, funding arrangement. And uh, I, I think that at this point, you know, our recommendation is the renewal that's before the board, which is a 7% premium increase when you include both the Blue Cross plan and the um, PFA combined together. That will allow us to continue to uh, accrue um, a balance over the uh, course of the, the year. Um, where, you know, the target is that between that three and $400,000 range when we get to the end of next fiscal year. You know, we've talked about, you know, an option to try to reduce the increase and maybe reduce that buffer being accrued over the course of the year. And the feedback that we've gotten is that, you know, while there are areas that we would, you know, could look to try to address shortfalls in the budget, that this would not be one that would be um, acceptable uh, for the financial planning team. And I think for a lot of the other stakeholders. So that brings us to this evening with uh, this plan before you to recommend um, the renewal. And I believe we've prepared a motion. Did you say seven or seven and a half? It's a seven percent premium increase. The budget remains at seven and a half percent. And for those who are wondering, you know, what's the what, why the difference? Well, we have two plans. One is the active employee plan, which renews on a fiscal year basis, 
And then the other is our Medicare retiree plan, which renews on a calendar year basis. We don't get those rates until much later in the calendar year, usually October. Um, you know, so you know, at this point, um, the, we're asking for approval on the plan. The budget itself has not been set, but we clearly will be going with town meeting with a budget to, at a minimum, fund that increase, uh, if not include a, a small buffer as we have right now. Okay, thank you. All right, so any, uh, uh, do we have a motion? We can there is a motion. Is there any questions after we hear the motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve the attached fiscal year 2021 employee health insurance plan entitled renewal plan year. July 1, 2020 through June 30, 2021. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any dis further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. It's muted. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. And I vote aye, so it's unanimous. All right, so next order of business is affirming the designation of the public safety director to file the report of the moderator's declaration to postpone the town meeting with the attorney general's office. Mr. Gilbert is gonna explain the interesting reason behind why this is on our docket. Uh, yeah, so, um... The, the law that allows for the, um, the delay by the moderator by declaration due to a public health emergency um, specifically states that the select board will designate the public safety official to report that postponement of the, again, special town meeting to the attorney general. And um, our, our charter um, in it has the answer to the question, but for purposes of being crystal clear, we talked with town council um, at the suggestion, I believe, of the town clerk. And uh, we're asking the board just to affirm that, that act. In truth, um, the declaration was filed on Thursday or Friday of last week and has been received by the attorney general's office. But we just want to make it crystal clear um, that, that the public safety director is the person authorized to have filed it. And not actually just one follow up on that. And just for, you know, North Reading trivia, has there ever been another occasion when they have had to postpone? They postpone. There had to have been if it was in the charter, right? Uh, no. So I, I'm sorry. The reason that the my understanding is that, that the state statute yes. does, contemplates that there would be either a police or fire chief that would be fire would be filing that. But our charter, actually, as we know, with the public safety director um, assignment, um, you know, answers the question. We're looking to make that clear through the vote of the board. Okay, and hopefully everyone agrees with this. Do we have a motion or any questions? No, it already happened. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Any questions? Do, do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to affirm <coughs> the designation of the Public Safety Director to file the report of the moderator's declaration to postpone town meeting with the Attorney General's office. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion by yes. Ms. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. Schultz. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I vote aye. It's unanimous. So all these interesting facts we, we are learning because of COVID-19. All right, so next order of business is our special town meeting and Acres Poultry Farm. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so as we mentioned, um, the, by vote of the board, um, and by recommendation of the board and um, by action of the uh, town moderator, the special town meeting, which was scheduled to take place one week from tonight, has been postponed to June 8th and will be further postponed to Monday, June 29th at 7.10 p.m. Um, the, um, you know, for the community, the board's efforts to um, evaluate the acquisition of these properties uh, is continuing and um, that we expect that there will be 
know, additional information available for the public um, in advance of the town meeting uh, to provide an opportunity for um, both the public and the boards and committees that may wish to make recommendations to town meeting um, to do so. So more to come with regard to that. Okay. That really was the intent of the update at this point on my part, Madam Chair. All right, any questions, members have any questions? All set, okay. Next order of business is to review <laughs> review the June, June town meeting timeline, which I think you just did, but if you wanna reiterate. Sure, so that was for the special town meeting. This is uh, for the June not 29th annual town meeting. The uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee will make its recommendations to the select board at your next meeting on May 18th. And uh, I do apologize, but I was uh, intent to update the board when we were discussing the revenue plan. Uh, as uh, members, uh, the, the chair and um, Mr. Schultz know, um, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee under the leadership of Mr. Kelleher has formulated a very limited capital investment program for the June town meeting. Um, with a um, you know, recommendation of only a handful of items uh, that will be presented to you at the May 18th meeting. And um, with the thinking that you know, we could evaluate or reevaluate capital investments um, at the October town meeting when that occurs. But you'll hear the details of that at the May 18th or next select board meeting. We've identified a tentative budget hearing date of Monday, June 1st. And um, that the board for any article recommendations that you wish to include in the warrant, you that we ask that we make those decisions no later than the meeting of Monday, June 1st. Um, and the warrant will be signed that evening. And then uh, there'll be a deadline for any other boards or committees to have their recommendations printed in the written warrant that will be mailed to folks at home um, by June 4th at 9 a.m. Um, and then we'll submit it to the printer the next day. Residents will get it about two weeks later, either the Saturday or the Monday, two weeks before the June 29th meeting. And we'll ask the board on the 15th to both have the warrant article hearing and to designate uh, meeting um, assign, uh, warrant article assignments. So I, I wanna thank Karen for first having made the, the larger spreadsheet that I think you've all seen in various forms over the past two years and for consolidating this down into something much shorter just for the high points. So thank you, Karen, for that. Okay, members have any questions? All set, all right. So that brings us to the next agenda item, which is to review the draft June town meeting warrant. Mm -hmm. Mr. Governor, no. Thank you, Madam Chair. The, the things that I'm gonna note, I won't go through every article um, at this point, but um, we have added to the beginning of the warrant two articles relative to the um, Turkey Farm um, property. 14 Concord Street and then 4 and 12 Concord Street. Again, it is my understanding that the board's intention is to take up those items in special town meeting the evening of June 29th. Um, however, if that uh, proves not to be um, an alternative, that this would be a, a, a sort of a, a second option um, that would not require a, a quorum. Um, and we put them at the beginning only because the, the way we were intending and when we recommended to the board to delay to the 29th was that the uh, turkey farm would be the first thing taken up um, that night um, at the at the meeting. Um, any questions with regard to that? And uh, um, if not, does that have any questions? Oh, and do the members have any questions? No. All set. Uh, this is uh, this is on the June. Oh, time. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, the annual time. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, just in relation to the um, town council budget and specifically the 40B yes. ongoing situation, is it our intention to, should we, our intention, should we have a separate warrant article available <clears throat> rather than having to go from fiscal year to fiscal year to carry the money forward? Would it be wiser to just set up a separate account? So I believe that it, that it would be. Uh, my impression from the initial conversation was the board that maybe we wanted to look at what that number will be and I'm expecting to get that information in the next couple of days. Um, so, um, but I, I think that we may want to consider adding a warrant article. It would be later in the warrant, putting it on there, probably near where the special counsel article is. Um, but I, you know, that to me, I think that would be, I think that would be preferable rather than having it within the annual operating budget. That's just my, my personal opinion. Well, yeah, no, just the way that it's looking now, I mean, it's going to be time-wise, timeline-wise could be over the course of a couple couple more fiscal years, by the time we get to any type of conclusion on um, 
what right. action needs to be taken and by right. whom. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, we'll have somewhat of a surplus, I guess, in that portion of our budget at the end of the current fiscal year, correct? It could, yes, yeah, I expect that we will, yes. Right, so that therefore, because the delays down now at the state level with the safe harbor, so I, I think it would just be wise to have money available that can bridge the gap of fiscal years that we can add to at appropriate times during the October and June town meetings if necessary. So, okay, that's all. So that's the only thing I would suggest including in the warrant. Okay, okay. I, I, I agree. I, again, I don't know what the other members feel, but I just think it would be more prudent. And we'll have more information about the, the dollar value, uh, which we can you know, present when we have the article um, on the 18th, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, we do have some idea of that because we're approving the legal bills on a regular basis. So it's Perfect. not it's not like it's not, it's not gonna be a surprising figure given what we've spent so far. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any other questions? No. I'll do, Madam Chair, just regard, with regard to the warrant, if it's okay, I'm going to skip way ahead <laughs> um, down to um, articles uh, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30, um, which relate to the efforts on the part of the school department and the school committee to um, make lighting and uh, solar um, improvements or additions to the uh, school facilities or grounds. Um, and again, I think just you know more for the record, the board has <clears throat> signed off on my uh, participating uh, from a logistical standpoint on these conversations, um, despite my having an ownership interest uh, in property that's uh, nearby. Um, but uh, we've been having conversations and there is a request for proposals that is um, out on the street from the school committee. And I, I do wanna recognize the hard work of the school committee and particularly Michael Conley to try to pull this together despite everything else that's going on in the background. Um, he's continued to keep his eye on the ball on this. Um, we've had some conversations with Reading Municipal Light Department, and they do have a, a, a companion or similar program that they are looking to offer, although it does not appear that it is um, moving forward on the timeline that the school committee might be interested in, that it may not be working as, a, uh, as aggressive a timeline. Um, but nonetheless, uh, where I believe that the school department is at is they're going to take some feedback from Reading Municipal Light on that uh, RFP and maybe make some adjustments to reflect the unique nature of uh, us being within a municipal light department um, service area. And um, we'll see what, what, what these yield for proposals and um, the school committee will be able to make a determination as to what direction it wants to move in. Um, and obviously, if it's not satisfied with whatever comes forward, um, they uh, have the option not to move in any direction. Um, but uh, regardless, you know, the effort does require town meeting approval, both for the building and for the financial mechanisms. And um, these articles have all been assembled um, with the consult of town council to allow the school committee to do so. Um, if there are any adjustments to that, we'll certainly incorporate them in a future draft of the warrant prior to the board being um, asked to sign on June 1st. Okay, any questions? Members all set? Okay. Is that does that conclude your the review for the warrant? Does yes. All right, so let's move on to the next order of business, which is to the license for the water main construction at three hundred three Main Street, and we have a vote to approve that. That's correct. Do you want to give a little? Sure. So th this is a two pronged approach, and I, I do apologize. There is a modified agenda that was posted this afternoon um, to also add a vote on the order of taking for the uh, permanent easement at this address. So this would be a license for temporary access for the construction and installation of water mains, which we are looking to do while um, the non-essential uh, business closure is in effect um, or not too far after it expires. So having the license gives us the authority to do that. Um, and we've worked that out with uh, the, um, the owner of the property. Um, but we've also um, have, uh, and it's in a separate document in the meeting folder this evening because it was added very late, but we actually have the order of taking, uh, which the board, uh, if it's so comfortable, um, would be, uh, is in a position to potentially approve, but that approval would be conditional to us receiving the uh, signed uh, waiver of damages, which we know the business terms and we've discussed them previously, 
Um, we just haven't had the opportunity to get the signed uh, waiver from all of the parties that are involved. So if the board is comfortable with proceeding with the order of taking, it certainly could, but we've developed this license if the board's not quite ready yet because it's obviously come in very fast being added this evening. The license will allow us to at least get the water main work going, we think on a much faster timeline. Um, and again, this is for the water chlorination facility located behind the uh, plaza that includes um, Dos Lobos and um, I can't think of the fitness center's name. Um, I, I apologize, but there's a fitness center in there as well at 303 Main Street. Yeah, it's I, IPR. I, I, yeah, IPF. In, yeah. IPF, yes, yeah. Okay, do the members have any questions? I think the motion is for the license. Yeah. Correct. The motion is on a license, but do the members have any question regarding that? No. Okay. Ms. Turley, you all set? Mrs. Gonzalez, you're all set? Mm -hmm. You all set? Uh, so. You want the motion? Do I, do have a motion? I move to approve the license for water main construction at 303 Main Street and to authorize the town administrator to sign the license. Second. I have a motion. This is Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. A motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? None. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Schultz? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. And I vote aye. Unanimous. Next order of business is to approve the legal bills. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for March 2020 in the amount of $18,864.37. As follows, Copelman and Page, $12,351.37. Copelman and Page, $3,373.50. 20 Elm Street 40B project, $760.50. SSBC litigation, $2,379 for a total of $18,864.37. I have a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And I vote aye. Unanimous. Madam Chair. Madam Chair yes, just, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gilberto brought up the uh, uh, potential for authorizing the order of taking. Are we going to proceed with that also? I don't understand what that means. So, so there, there is um, the licenses for temporary access. It does not give the town an interest in the property. It simply gives us permission to put in the water lines. Um, town council has been working at our direction to try to come up with the actual order of taking. And late today, he was able to draft and provide us language that allows us to, to take, you know, to take possession of an easement for both uh, temporary for construction, but also for the permanent um, water mains and the uh, chlorination facility itself. And much like we did with the temporary easement, the board, if it's so inclined, could vote to approve the order of taking at this evening's meeting. But I would recommend that that approval be conditioned that it would not be filed with the Registry of Deeds until we receive the waiver of damages. And um, so I think as the board members know, we've negotiated terms with the owner of the property, um, which I'm happy to review here for, for everyone again, um, for uh, our permanent construction there. Um, if the board's not comfortable with voting that this evening because of the, the timing, certainly we understand that, but uh, where I know we've you know, had the business terms outlined for a number of months now, uh, we were hoping that we would be able to get approval on that with that condition. I think, but I think we can put that on the, if we don't even have a waiver of damages, I think that that's taken a step before we need all of the documentation in order. So if, if we're going to be meeting again, in a couple of weeks and we've given the vote on the, the license, then maybe we can have everything in order and voting to approve it when everything's in order first versus doing an order taking without both at the same time. 
Sure. Well, we, we have the ability to access the property um, through the license. And so, you know, we can certainly proceed under that. And um, I, I fully expect based on my conversations with the owner that we would have um, have everything in hand signed off, um, you know, in advance of the board taking the vote, if that's what it so desires. Yeah, I think we need that all in order. And we need the owner's waiver in order before we decide we're going to do an order of taking. Is there a reason why it's delayed? We got one thing done, but not the other. That's correct. We're trying. We're trying to keep two things, really three things, moving at the same time. And one of them was ready on Friday, and the other was just not ready until today. But you know, my, my understanding from the conversations is that we, you know, the, the license is the permission for us to start the the more disruptive work on the property, which is the water mains, and, and that's what we'll do. Um, I, I have two requisitions pending with me purchase orders to expend funds for the construction and you know it would be my intention upon receiving the signed license back from Mr. Dimitri to approve those and go forward with the construction. Okay, so Mr. O'Leary, you want to move forward with the order of taking without the waiver, right? Yeah, well, conditional okay. upon the waiver being signed before we before we file with the registry of deeds. To me, it's just, you know, we have everything in hand pretty much and it's let's move this project forward finalize everything and, and know what our, what direction we're going to be taking and give the administration as much latitude as possible uh, to move forward on a timeline, not contingent upon our meeting or a town meeting. <laughs> or anything else. So we're, we're nine tenths of the way there. And so I just think it's, uh, there are no Mr. safeguards. Wallen, you have any, oh, I'm sorry. Miss, I thought you were done. Mr. Wallen, you have any thoughts on that? No. Mr. Schultz. Mrs. Gonzalez. Good. And I, I think we should have things in order. If we could get nine tenths of the way there, let's get 10 tenths of the way there before we start doing an order of taking. It makes sense that the owner would get and not the other half. So I don't think we have a consensus on that. So let's make sure that's docketed. And if it's that much of a push to get this done, then we need to have all the documents in order to get it done. All right, Mr. Gilberto. So we're moving on to our next order of business, which is your report for us. Madam Chair, thank you. A um, couple of things to report. First, that um, the town's open space and recreation plan was conditionally approved by the state. Um, the town planner and the um, committee will be working um, on answering the state's questions and comments over the next few weeks. Um, so we are. Um, I mean, we look forward to that effort, but uh, it's an important step for us to be um, in the queue, if you will, for state funding uh, now or down the road for any um, environmental or recreation based uh, project. I mean, we do have a couple of earmarks that are, um, or at least one earmark that is uh, based out of an environmental bond bill. So that uh, having that approval is important for us to try to get, um, get, to get uh, access to state grant funding uh, if and when it becomes available. And um, I know select board member um, Gonzalez was obviously very active with that and I'm sure will be as that work continues. So thank you for your help with that. My pleasure. Um, and then secondly, um, the board members may be aware, um, we had an $8.9 million general obligation um, bond anticipation note um, that uh, was uh, coming due on May 28th. And um, we had to uh, go for a rating call with Moody's Investor Service to um, in order to continue that borrowing for a year. Um, we're obviously we're going into that bond rating call at a very uh, unique time um, for the economy. And at a point in time where, as we've said, I believe at these meetings that the um, municipal borrowing market is, um, is not very favorable right now. Um, but I am pleased to report that Moody's has assigned uh, an MIG one rating uh, to our general obligation bans and um, has also maintained our AA2 general obligation rating um, that the town has for its um, general fund um, bond issuances. So um, that's certainly encouraging news in, in, a, in, a, in a very difficult time for the economy. Um, just reading quickly from their press release, the, the rating reflects the town's long-term credit quality that is reflected in the AA2 long-term rating, uh, satisfactory management of refinancing risk and our healthy liquidity. Um, so, um, you know, that certainly was encouraging uh, to hear and um, 
I think um, we had a very candid conversation in which um, the finance director and Mr. O'Leary participated with, with uh, Moody's. And um, I think we impressed upon them um, all the steps that we're trying to take to um, maintain control of our financial destiny. And I think that it's made a good, in, a good impression despite all the uncertainty. And that's uh, new, new news as of this afternoon. So um, if you didn't, none of you were aware of that before, I apologize, but just found that out. Okay, any questions for Mr. Gilberto? Comments, Mr. O'Leary? Uh, just that the conversation with, the, with, with Moody's was interesting to say the least. And uh, it was interesting to hear their concerns in relation to, you know, the tenuous situation everybody's in, the local governments are in uh, going forward. But it was also heartening to hear that they uh, appreciated the efforts that we put in and the stability that we have thus far. Uh, while they still issued some caution to us, uh, it's uh, heartening to hear that they were willing to at least allow us to sustain the, the rating that we have, which is good, because I don't think that's going to be the case for everybody. So it was, it was an interesting conversation. Uh, I enjoyed it. <laughs> and. Uh, you know, but it's something that we have to take notice of because it, it can change rapidly. Obviously, you know, we have to go to, uh, for bonding in the future. They're going to take a look at us again. But I think uh, we've presented a very good, stable picture for at least the time being. So I think it's very good. And thank you for also. I sure thank you for participating in that because I am still working and Mr. O'Leary is filling in everywhere that he can if there are things that I can't make it to. So I appreciate that. And any, how about any further discussion question, Mr. Walner? Nothing, Mr. Schultz? No questions, Mrs. Gonzalez? No, and I just wanna, I think to further add that our credit quality, no doubt is due to the buildup of our stabilization fund in part at least. And I'm sure that our healthy liquidity is due to what we have in our cash reserves. So this is another reason why we want to shore those up, continue shoring those up, continue to making contributions to those and not just spending those as band-aids or one-time budget expenditures. And that is all I have to add on that. I don't have any questions. And uh, we're now to old and new business. So Mr. O'Leary. Uh, I'd just like to get back to a comment that I made earlier in relation to um, uh, future stimulus packages, packages being passed by Congress. I think we should uh, send a letter under the signature of the chair uh, to our congressmen and our United States senators, urging them to ensure that future stimulus packages include aids to states and localities. Uh, I think it's a stupid idea that uh, someone even made the comment that they should allow states to go bankrupt. But uh, aside from that, I just think it's essential that uh, the federal government uh, recognize that the stability, financial stability of state and local governments is critical uh, to our economy, critical to keeping services uh, available. And that I think the United States uh, Congress should in their future stimulus packages uh, strongly consider uh, having um, some aid to the states and, and localities. So I just think it would be good for us to go on record uh, with our congressional delegation and send it all the way to, uh, to the White House. So um, gonna act local here and think about what's gonna happen down the, down the road. So I think it needs to be included and I would uh, look forward to hearing from the rest of my colleagues here as to whether or not in favor of having a letter go out under the signature of the chair stating as such. Let me just poll the members right now to see if we can get a unanimous consent on that initiative. Um, if, if we can, Walner, what's your thought? On first blush, I, I, it sounds favorable to me. Mr. Schultz. As long as we sent the letter in a nonpartisan matter, I would agree with it. I don't know that we would send it in any other manner than that because we. I just really get leery when our board gets involved in national when it comes politics. To money. Mrs. Gonzalez. Yeah, I think I 
think the question is, are you, are you on board with us just making a, we've done this in the past. So I think I'm just looking for a unanimous consent to move forward on that initiative of, if we're all in agreement, if we're not, then we're not. Are you in agreement with that, Mr. Schultz? Yeah, I just said I would. Yeah. Okay. Mrs. Gonzalez? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The nomin I'm actually in, in favor of that too. So I think we should, by unanimous can, consent, we can all agree that we would like to partake of any aid that's who don't mind drafting a letter. If everyone is in agreement, we'll ship it off and see what we can do to try to help our town. All right, anything else, Mr. O'Leary? Yeah, just that, you know, reminding people to, uh, you know, the rules are changing a little bit and people need to be out and about and keep their distance and wear their masks. Oh, I should have brought mine. I have, a, I have a nice Red Sox one that someone made for me, uh, which hides my face and most people don't recognize me, which is pretty good. So it's, uh, but it's important, you know, what we're doing is we're doing it for each other and uh, we're in this uh, for the long haul. And again, hopefully it gives us some relief sooner than rather than later, but as, as this drags on, and I don't know about the rest of the members here, but it's, uh, it's coming closer and closer home to roost. I mean, more and more people that I know have relatives and, and friends and close associates and um, who are being impacted by this virus. Uh, two in my neighborhood, there's uh, you know, friends and acquaintances who have lost their parents already and uh, siblings. And it's, uh, you know, at first, you know, for, at least for me, I don't know about the rest of you, you know, you heard about it, you think it's a terrible thing and it's awful and all the rest, but now all of a sudden, as we're communicating more, uh, their faces and names to those faces you know, that people I know, you know, people I love that are impacted by it. So, you know, we're in it for the long haul. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's inconvenient, but there's going to be a new way of life for us. And let's make the adjustments and stick together and do what we can, wear our masks and cooperate with the local authorities and the state authorities as they ask us to, and uh, we'll get through it. And uh, again, as far as technology goes, I forgot to mention what I mentioned about Bob Masseri. If it wasn't for Bob Masseri, we probably wouldn't have all that we have right now. I mean, he was so uh, uh, involved with technology and insistent upon the town being able to invest early on and wisely in a technology that we are able and capable to do what we're enjoying here today. So uh, just another kudos to Bob. And uh, again, we are going to miss him and he's a good friend and uh, God bless him. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Walner. Uh, I have nothing to read. No, nothing to add. Okay. Mr. Schultz, any older new business? Yeah, just real quick. I, I want to thank the town. I know it's been really hard to be cooped up inside. I know the kids, especially, uh, and the seniors that are not really having a senior year. And I just want to thank everybody for cooperating. Echo a little bit what Mr. O'Leary just said as far as wearing a mask, trying to do the right things. If, you know, we had two really nice days uh, this weekend, but in, I was over at IRP a couple of times with a dog and people were walking around and social distancing and doing their thing. Everybody was kind of playing by the rules and it, it's just really encouraging to see. I just thank, I know it's hard. I just thank everybody for cooperating with the town. I know the public safety and the, the health director and the board of health are doing everything they can to try to keep us safe. And I just want to thank people for, you know, cooperating with us. It, it goes a long way and I thank them. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Mrs. Gonzalez? Yep, just like I said earlier, you know, hang in there, everybody. We're, we're getting to the finish line, hopefully, soon. Okay. And um, I'm sorry. I thought not being on video would help, but it still keeps coming in out. And I just want to say that to, to also echo that at this point where the weather is getting better, there are more people out there biking, walking, walking their dogs and things like that. So just for the people that are getting back on the road and venturing out to just be mindful of that. And um, to also echo what Mr. O'Leary says is just, we just have to keep, keep keeping on with these measures. I heard a statistic today that's, that um, was the average age of 
people that are deceased from this 54. So there's a lot of information out there that this is maybe just an old person's issue. It isn't. It hits across every every age. And if you see the heart breaking, please, from the medical providers, what we need to be doing, those are the those are the people that we should be listening to and uh, paying attention to because they're really in the thick of it in the in the fight for all, us all. So we should be listening to them and heeding their warnings. And with that said, I think we're at the end and we are going to recess to executive session. We're going to come back to open session only for purposes of adjournment. And what we need is a motion for um, going into executive session under uh, executive subsection six. Do I have a motion, Mrs. Gonzalez? Um, so, Madam Chair, I move to enter back into executive session for the purpose of. Uh, Real Estate, 412 and 14 Concord Street. And was there something else we were gonna discuss? Uh, th that's um, the only agenda item, but we would be admitting um, the, um, we'd be admitting finance committee members, Don Kelleher and Abby Hurlbut and town planner, Danielle McKnight. And we would be, uh, we would be recessing only to adjourn. Madam Chair, may I make a suggestion that we also- And I, I also think where we- Madam Chair, if we could just also invite, uh, if he has the time, uh, a finance committee, committee member, uh, Vincenzo Studo, uh, also to be included. Since my guess is at some point in time, he'll be sitting with us. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> Did we lose her? No, I, I, are we, can you hear me? Not very well. Oh boy, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh my goodness, this is, a, so uh, we are going in under both subsections, right? So that we can conclude discussion under subsection three and then the subsection six. Was that what the motion was? No, it was only for six. I didn't realize that you wanted to go for three as well. I, I, I must have missed that. <laughs> I think we should just, you know, enter for, for both purposes to conclude our okay. discussions on that. Um, and I think we have, I think we're going to be joined already by two of the members of the finance committee, right? I don't know. You sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. <laughs> so, Madam Chair, so you, you want to go into for both uh, exemption three and six? Because <laughs> we, right? we didn't finish. Right. I don't think we were. Even if we, if we were not getting we into the anyway. detail, we, okay. weren't, we weren't quite done. So. All right. Okay, that's fine. And so three and six, and then also to include uh, finance committee members. Uh, Abby Hurlbutt, Don Kelleher. Mr. Studo. Mr. Studo. Yeah. And then and uh, is Danielle Liz going to be in there? Danielle McKnight, no? Danielle McKnight. Danielle, yes, Liz, no. And, and what about, uh, who's the other gentleman we had there? Was it Paul? We, we, we lost him at nine o'clock. Yeah, he was no longer him. available at, after nine. Okay. <laughs> All right, so it's a motion by Mrs. Gonzalez. Do I have a second? Second. And a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? No discussion. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Ms. Hope you're fighting out there, Madam Chair. Steve, take us home. <laughs> Okay, so, so uh, Madam Chair voted aye. Uh, Mrs. Gonzalez, aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Okay, 
and then Mr. Schultz did too. <laughs> Have you been drinking, Kate? <laughs> I'm just going to talk like Kate. <laughs> I'm okay. so sorry, guys. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. You might as well just, okay, so we're going to recess. I mean, we're going to reconvene and we're not, we're only coming back to adjourn. Thank you. So